G'day YouTube, welcome back, 1MJ here. Well, it's Monday morning here in Australia and we're waiting to see what happens with the markets when the uh, CME and all the rest of it open up. That'll be a little bit later today in Australia, sort of lunchtime this afternoon-ish in Australia. So obviously this is still uh, Sunday night, very uh, early Monday morning over in the States. But we can see 363 billion, so not much has really happened. Uh, there's little bits of green sort of here and there, but there is that CME gap uh, that's at around $11,110 that Bitcoin uh, has passed through over the weekend. So we'll have to wait and see whether that fills or maybe Bitcoin just wakes up uh, when the CME opens uh, and just pushes straight through uh, and it's one of those ones that doesn't get filled. But, you know... The CME gaps, they're generally filled 90-something uh, percent of the time. I don't know the exact figure, but I think someone said sort of high 90%, 96% or something like that. Percent of the times they get filled, so we'll have to wait and see. What I'm really pleased about, though, is ETH gas prices are coming way down right now. So that's really, really good. But unfortunately, it's only a matter of time until they go back up. There'll be another kind of run and everyone will be jumping back into ETH and trying to find the new latest coin on Uniswap and things like that. But Uniswap is looking at layer two solutions along with Synthetix Network uh, and a number of other platforms that were really chewing up a majority of the gas fees. And Tether, uh, they also uh, moved off uh, the main net. So that's obviously really good. Now, let's have a look at something that I found really interesting. So more investors are currently hodling Bitcoin in anticipation of a 2021 uh, bull market. So new data shows Bitcoin's price action is showing higher levels of hodling activity than previous bull cycles. So even more than uh, previous. So that's interesting. Obviously, uh, Bitcoin, you know, it's going to be a lot more widely adopted this time around. We can already see public traded companies are getting into it. So there is a chance that this bull run could be the biggest bull run in history. I'm not sure whether it will be or won't be. You know, time will tell. We'll have to wait and see. But I get the feeling like a lot of money is going to come into Bitcoin in this next bull run. According to on-chain analysis, Willy Woo, you can find him over on Twitter, an indicator called uh, reflexivity has been increasing in recent months. Wu explained that the indicator measures Bitcoin investors' tendency to hold on to their Bitcoin as its price rises. It's essentially an alternative way to gauge hodling activity of retail investors. This next bull run may eclipse the previous cycle. There are several reasons why retail investors might be holding on to their BTC even more so than in previous bull cycles. If Bitcoin rallies in 2021, most investors would see it as a positive, as a post-halving bull rally. Historically, Bitcoin has rallied 12 to 15 months after each halving, according, uh, recording a new all-time high each time. Based on the tendency of BTC to rally after a halving, retail investors might be hodling as a strategy to avoid being priced out of a strong sustained rally, if a strong sustained rally begins. Bitcoin has also shown a surprising level of resilience through multiple potential black swan events. After its initial recovery from the pandemic-induced crash in March, it stayed above 10,000 despite numerous negative events. Most recently, the price of Bitcoin slumped after the US Commodities and Futures Trading Commission, CFTC, charged BitMEX with violating the Bank Secrecy Act. After the CFTC announced, Bitcoin price fell below 10,500, but it quickly recovered to 10,700 support level. According to Wu, this is possibly due to the confluence of two key factors. This is uh, his explaining. But this is true, and I believe Bitcoin's just going to keep going up. Uh, I, I believe the micro strategy uh, investing uh, method, where they just keep slowly buying it up, slowly but surely, is in play, and there's a number of other institutional buyers getting involved right now. This reflexivity is the tendency of hodlers to hold on to their coins as the price increases. I'd expected reflexivity to increase during the, the mania phase of bull markets, but it looks quite consistent from the last two cycles. The cycle is interesting. Reflexivity is increasing rather than static uh, compared to last cycles. While we now need more capital investment to get similar percentage gains uh, in price, the effect of hodlers holding onto coins tighter is magnifying number go up uh, per dollar invested. So this is all really, really bullish for Bitcoin. 
you know, people are holding on to it uh, and they're not panic selling as much as they would have in the past. Uh, and that is going to lead to prices, uh, you know, moving substantially. Now, we can have a look. I brought this up the other day. So there we go. Uh, CM, uh, CME Futures uh, has opened this morning and it's gone straight to 11390 So we have a gap from $11,110 to, let's say, 11355 So there we go. We have a gap. Now we'll have to wait and see whether that's going to be filled. Now look, it may not get filled. Not every gap gets filled, but most of them do. So that's what I'll be looking for. If it doesn't happen today, uh, I would be looking for it to come back and be filled sometime this week. So, you know, if you're looking at getting into some Bitcoin, looking for a good buy-in price, probably set it for around about sort of $11,115, $11, $11, $11, $11, $11, $11, $11, $11, $11, $11, $11, $11, $11, $11, $11, $11, $11, $11, $11, $11, $11, $11, $11, $11, $11, $11, $11, $11, $11, $11, $11, $
you know, they mix and match it. And it's not just, you know, one trader that needs to do it. It's when a whole stack of sort of traders decide. And it's not always that they're deciding together. It's not like it's a full conspiracy, although I'm sure they do get together and do that kind of stuff on occasions. But they will just trade against the sentiment. They'll go, rightio, it's getting a little bit too exuberant at the moment. I'm going to short the market and I'm going to sell a little bit. And there'll be other traders that, you know, either happen to do the same thing at the same time or, you know, sometimes again, I do suspect it may be coordinated and boom, everyone's gone long and everyone uh, gets, you know, their longs annihilated and the shorts win and then it'll be vice versa and they'll keep changing that around. Now, they're not going to be doing that on a daily basis. Uh, there will be times where they simply don't go against the trend because other people are suspecting that they'll do that. So it's quite a game of cat and mouse and things like that, trying to work out where the markets are going. And look, for me, that's why I don't really trade and I don't leverage trade. Uh, it's just too hard and you know, it, it's more pot luck than anything. Uh, I'm an investor. I do a little bit of research, sometimes a lot of research, you know, just depending uh, on things. I've uh, done a lot of research in Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies in general. That's why I got into it. Uh, and then when I invest in new coins, I just do the most that I sort of can. You know, particularly with new coins, it's hard. There's not a lot of data that you can go off. And I try and make sure that there's teams behind it, you know, that you can research and things like that. And that it has a use case. That's what I'm looking for. And that's what helps me make decisions. But look, I get it wrong. I've got, you know, coins that are, are heavily in the red at the moment. But my overall... Uh, portfolio is in the green and generally not doing too bad although if we go back to the Bitcoin chart uh, I was sitting quite pretty uh, here uh, and by the time we sort of got down to here I'd lost uh, well over a, yeah I think I went from uh, being significantly in profit of like maybe 130 percent in profit and I came way back down to you know sort of 80 percent in profit or something like that in total overall you know which isn't too bad, but you know, it's again, I don't have millions of dollars uh, <laughs> uh, in the market. I don't have millions of dollars full stop, but you know, maybe I might get lucky and the peak of the next bull market, I might have a million or two. You know, I'd have to get pretty lucky for that to happen. But you know, you do what you do. I I'm not rich, I'm a day to day worker. I put in what I can uh, and we go from there. But that's what I'm looking for. Will this CME gap get covered today? Or will it get covered sometime this week? Or is this going to be one of those gaps that just basically never gets filled? Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. All right. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. By the looks of it, we should all still be on that gain train at the moment. And I'll see you next time.